Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I kind of just want to touch on what's next for me now that I've hit a positive net worth. In my most recent monthly update, my November update, I shared that I have finally reached a positive net worth, which is to me almost a bigger milestone than, no, I think I'll be more excited to be debt free to be honest, but Hitting zero is pretty big, and I'm not just at zero, I'm a little bit beyond that, like 300 something dollars, but it still is a pretty big milestone in my journey, and I feel like this is kind of a shifting point in my journey, so I wanted to make a video on what my kind of next steps are and my next big goals following this. Now, to be honest, nothing is really gonna change for the near future just because I'm still in debt. And being in debt, I feel like has held me back quite a bit because I have to put the bulk of my money. I don't have to, obviously. I know that I could invest more money into my brokerage account, my Roth IRA, or any sort of investing account and make more money that way versus paying down my student loans. But I just would feel more comfortable paying down my student loans and that is something, I just want to be completely debt free. And I know that me paying off my debt will allow me to make more investments later. And even though it is slowing me down a little bit, I still think I can get pretty far and catch up once I do pay them off. Basically, my next big goal when it comes to my finances, aside from being completely debt-free, is reaching a net worth of $100,000. And I, I had said this before in my, if you watch my money milestone video, I can link it down below, that I want to reach this by the age of 30. That's a pretty big stretch uh, because that's only a year and a half away. So can I do that? Honestly, I'm not sure. And that that does sound pretty unrealistic just because I know getting to $100,000 is one of the most difficult things to get to because the compounding interest is not working in your favor yet. Like you need more money invested in order for your money to grow faster on its own. And that just doesn't happen until you hit 100,000. But with that being said, I am still gonna aim for that because I can and I like to do that. I like to set goals because it pushes me a little bit further. It will make me take more action. Now keep in mind that I am saying $100,000 in net worth. I'm not saying $100,000 invested. I know that that's gonna take quite a long time because that's that's just way more money. Obviously I would need to put in just about $100,000 to get to that or like, you know, maybe $80,000 at least to get to that point. And that's just not gonna happen by the age of 30. So 100,000 net worth between my investment accounts and then my savings account and my other savings, like my emergency fund and my sinking funds. So I think that is a little bit possible. I don't include my car in my net worth. If I purchased a house, which I won't be within the next few years, I don't think, uh, I would not include that in my net worth either. I know it counts, but like I just prefer not to. I prefer to count my investments and the cash that I have on hand just because that's what I prefer to do. Personal finance is personal, right? So that that is what I'm gonna be aiming for and that is my next big goal. Obviously, I would like a huge chunk of that invested, but I think by the time I reach a $100,000 net worth, I'm actually gonna have the bulk of it in cash because I do want to save a lot for an emergency fund and then also start saving for a down payment for a home. Until then, I do have a little milestones that I can hit along the way. And I, again, that's gonna be in that video that I linked down below. So that's like $25,000 invested, which I would like to get to by the end of 2022, which I do think is possible, especially with the way the market has been. But of course, anything could happen. Um, 50K invested, et cetera, et cetera. And um, just having a certain amounts in my emergency savings, like I would like to have 9,000 by the end of next year all of which will play a part in that net worth number. As I said, not much is really gonna change, especially over 2022, because I need to pay off my debt first. I do have a goal of maxing out my Roth IRA for 2022. This also is going to depend on how much I make from my side hustle income, or if I get a job change, or yeah, just anything with, with that, because currently with my full-time job, I cannot contribute to my Roth IRA with that money because the money that I make from my full-time job is considered unearned income. It's almost treated like a scholarship even though it's my salary. And then the money that I am putting into my Roth IRA comes from my side hustles, my online income. So I do have to be really careful about that and make sure that 
I'm not writing off too many of my expenses so that I can make up for those contributions to my Roth IRA, which is why I have a CPA and he makes everything work out okay, but I'm hoping I can make enough online to max out my Roth IRA. And even if it takes like all of 2022 and then the first few months of 2023 to do that, I'm perfectly okay with that because you're able to, you know, contribute up until the start, uh, the end of the tax season. So I'm open to that. That would be pretty good. Of course, I will be making a video on my financial goals for the whole year of 2022. And that's going to involve a lot of numbers going into detail about that. But that's kind of just a rough breakdown of where I'm headed for the next year uh, since I've hit a net worth, a positive net worth. Now, my ultimate goal is to FIRE. So if you don't know what FIRE means, that stand, it's an acronym. So it stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. And really the main focus for me is the FI part of it. So financial independence, because honestly, something that has really popped up in my brain recently is, is this even going to be possible for me? Not the financial independence part, but the retire early, because I am the type of person who does not want to work for a person for the rest of my working life, like up until 65. That's something I, I've always known I didn't want to do just because that's to me very depressing and not living. However, since being diagnosed with a autoimmune disease that is chronic and I'm going to have it for the rest of my life, uh, unless some sort of cure comes out, I have, I've really struggled with accepting that and just thinking about fire may not be possible for me like it is for other people because of that situation. The main thing, my main concern is the health insurance and I know that a lot of people have reached financial independence and they've retired early and don't work for a company so they get their own health health plan but a lot of those people also don't have a chronic health issue so they don't really need to worry about that so i am in a situation where i feel like i need a good quality health insurance that helps me to cover everything that i do need to do throughout the year and i'm just afraid of completely retiring because of that because the way that United States works when it comes to health insurance doesn't really set us up to do well if we are self-employed or just paying for our own insurance outside of like a, a commercial agreement with the company. The other thing about FIRE that I find quite difficult is calculating what I'll need because so much about my life is inconsistent or just unknown. And that's what I find so mind-blowing about a lot of people going down that journey at such a young age because like how do you no, you know, because I know that I can just aim for a number like, yes, I absolutely would like to just keep investing so much that I'll end up with like $2 million. That is, that's really like one of the main things, 1.5 to $2 million. I have calculated that out. That would be like, you know, if I retired by the age of 40, I need about $1.5 million so I can live off of $40,000 per year. However, this does not, this, that's just me. So that doesn't account, uh, I wrote everything down. That doesn't account for marriage. Uh, if I get married, will my husband work still? Or will I be on their health insurance? Will we con create a joint account? Uh, there's so much to be thought about when it comes to that. And that's just not something I have any clue about yet because I am not married. Um, my job, I currently, I can't stay in this current job that I'm in for much longer. I only have about a year and a half left to stay in this job, not even. And then I have to either get a permanent position or a contract position or find something completely different. With that, if I find something completely different, I could increase my income significantly or maybe I could actually really lower it. Or if I were to get a permanent position at my current job, that's gonna change a lot of things when it comes to investing because then I can have my TSP plan and also my Roth IRA, which I don't have available to me right now. When that's going to happen, I have no clue. So that's another thing with the unknown, I don't know. Same idea with the benefits. Like I don't know if I'll have benefits if I were to be married or if I were to go to a different job or get the full-time position. And then the final thing that I really don't know about, which will change things pretty significantly, is my living situation and whether or not I will buy a house on my own. Um, currently I live in my apartment and I live in my own. It's quite expensive and that obviously is going to slow down my debt payment and also my 
fire plan. It's no secret that I definitely don't plan on purchasing a house within the next couple of years. It's probably gonna be a few years. So in the meantime, if my boyfriend, who I've been with for quite some time, if he purchases a house, and if that's the case, then I would move in with him after some time, and that would save me money, allow me to save more and invest more. Uh, also including saving more for my own home because I would probably look into rentals, like I would like to rent out homes or flip homes, and that is something that could drastically change my net worth or how my lifestyle pans out. Um, and then eventually I would like to get my own home, like maybe, I don't know, I, I really don't know. Everything is just so confusing and there's all these different possibilities and nothing is settled in my life. So I honestly, I don't know how people make decisions when they're at this point in their life where nothing is settled, like literally anything. So I'm not in a career that I'm gonna stay in forever. I am not in a living situation that I'm gonna be in forever. I don't have the benefits that I'm gonna have forever. So it's just interesting to me that people can figure this out because I definitely cannot. So with all that being said, my basic idea of FI is maybe not the usual type of fire that people pursue. And I am open to a couple of different types of fires. Going forward, I'm probably gonna be creating more videos on the fire movement because there's like, you know, I could make videos on the types of fire and what those mean, but there are a few that really stand out to me that I would be okay with doing. So the first one is slow fi, and this was something that was I guess coined by the Fioneers, I believe. These are their bloggers. And this is basically, you're really enjoying your life and taking things a lot slower when it comes to investing. So I'm still, I still would like to travel. I'm okay with spending money. I don't need to like ride a bike to work or do anything drastic to, you know, like I'm living in this expensive apartment because that's definitely not like the typical thing a person pursuing fire would do. Um, so I like the idea of slow fi where I'm like really enjoying the journey while I get to financial independence. The second one that I may be interested in is barista fi. So this would be having a part-time job, but you're still like, I don't need to go to a full-time job. I have a lot more flexibility and I have a lot of money invested. I'm basically financially independent, but I go to a, a part-time job for the benefits. So this would be like Starbucks or Costco or... Um, UPS or something like the, those major companies that still provide health insurance and benefits for employees who are part-time and also be able to use that money to live off of while your investments grow. And then the third one that I would be interested in is Coast Fi, which is you have enough invested so that you no longer need to invest anymore. So I would have to, I don't know, I would need to reach like $300,000 in my investment portfolio and I would that would grow enough by the time that I hit retirement age, by the time I hit 65, and I wouldn't need to add to it. I just would need to worry about making money on the side to live off of, so, you know, to pay for everything that I need. And that's the thing I'm interested in. I don't, you know, the, the retire early side of financial independence, a lot of people don't understand that because they think that you're just gonna like sit at home or sit on the beach all day and be lazy but that's not the case for most people a lot of people continue to work or they'd work on like passion projects which is definitely something i would like to lean more towards so even if i have to work a part-time job i still want to reach financial independence and not have to work for somebody else as like a full-time job the bulk of my life you know but also still have you know, who knows, the, my YouTube channel or my blogs or making something, anything that I really enjoy doing and just enjoying life rather than going to work the bulk of the time. So that's where I'm at. I mean, I feel like this video was kind of all over the place, but that is just kind of where I, I, that's kind of just how I feel like life is at the moment because it is all over the place and nothing is figured out yet. So maybe it will never be figured out, but right now there's a lot of unknowns for me. So I need to pay off my debt, just continue chucking away money at my debt and saving money and investing money. The same thing that I've been doing. Once I pay off my debt, I can invest more aggressively. I would like to reach those little milestones in between, have a certain amount invested, have a certain amount saved, get to that $100,000 net worth, which is gonna be a big milestone because from there, I know that my money will just grow and grow and grow. Of course, 
going forward, I would like to buy a house and do have a whole bunch of other financial goals, as you all know, but I just am not so sure about them yet. And then my ultimate goal is to fire. I think the thing is, I just have to take this one day at a time, just like everything else that has been my, my recent uh, affirmation, I guess you could say. I literally think this in my head constantly, like one day at a time, because when it comes to my health and when it comes to my finances and everything just in my life right now, it really just needs to be one day at a time because there's some good days, there's some bad days, some great days, and that's all I can do. And it's just gonna, it's literally gonna be one one dollar at a time as well because that's, you know, I'm taking part in Transfer Tuesday, I'm doing what I need to do as best as I can right now, and that's what I'm going to continue to do. I'm still very excited to have hit a positive net worth, but I will say it hasn't changed much of anything yet. <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep on chucking on. I'll probably start talking a lot more about financial independence, retire early on this channel. If you have any specific questions about it, feel free to let me know if, if it comes to my you know own personal stuff or any informative stuff that you may be interested in. Um, I do recommend checking it out if you haven't already. But yeah, that is that is the plan going forward. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you so, so much for watching and all of your positive and supportive comments on that video where I shared that I reached a positive net worth. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.